Hi there, Randy Green here, podcast two, and it is August 21st, the end uh, minutes of it, actually. Um, on Earth communities, apparently the big hot topic of August, uh, I did a little research on the internet, and Pothoff has put out his model of ultra-terrestrial models, talking about... Uh, ancient civilization that has coexisted with us on our planet for as long as humans have been around. So that's uh, kind of getting into the mainstream. And the question is, um, why is that and what are the ideas of this? But it goes with, as I talk about in the whole uh, project, new reality, as it always has been, the ones in truly control of our reality. They are seeding in this information into the collective and then those who are ready to download the information and work with it will be able to latch on to it and then get that as information files, as uh, ideas that this is what they need to do. And the same with me, I kind of, when I feel this, <laughs> it's different for me though, because um, many just might pick up on it. They don't really see what's going on. For me, it's actually like a kind of gray coming with me with a little ring uh, containing that kind of genetics that goes with this information and kind of, here you go. Uh, this is what we want you to broadcast. And uh, it's rare that I follow up on it unless I kind of feel that, yeah, it might be interesting, but to be honest, when I'm looking out there, there's so many that are picking up on this one. I'm just kind of, yeah, why even bother giving it to me as well? Everybody's kind of onto it. So what's the idea? Or why is it there? Or what's the goal with it other than just another wave of information that people are going to say, oh, yeah, we talked about this at that point and we talked about that at that point. So we could say, what is the big scope of things? Uh, with these uh, drips of information. And if we talk about the uh, collective consciousness developmental processes um, of the collective human race and their mind fields and their genomic structure, because it all comes down to genomes in the end, it comes down to the fact that uh, how we process information builds energy into our energy system. And that's uh, part of affecting our biological DNA. So it's all about upgrading the human DNA on many different fronts. Um, and that must be taken into consideration because if we just look at giving information on a brand, uh, grand scale of things, um, there has been given so much information. There's so much information on the internet. And I don't know if it changed your life that you know these things. Um, if I were just to study these things and read the paper and then ponder upon it and say, wow, that's interesting, how long would it last? Perhaps two hours? Then I would have forgotten it and moved on. And that's it, because people don't really contemplate. They don't really take the the deeper code systems behind the information and embed it into their mind field from where they will adapt that information into what we call a type of energy pattern, which would then allow them technically to link up to what we could say these realities. As if, yeah, we're giving you this information, but it's actually not just about giving information, actually about giving you access to a perception of a different, uh, what we call extra dimension of our reality field. So that you could go use this to expand your mind and build a pattern from where you would be able to interact directly with these people if uh, you have the, the genomic affinity to it. So, so that's what that is all about. And the question is, are they scouting for people that can do that? Is that what this is all about? Because we never really know what's the silver line of these, these different driplets of information. Because in the great uh, grand scheme of things, does it matter that we know these things as long as they're not in front of us, as long as people are not perceiving it on the mainstream level? Just asking it. Wouldn't it, it, it only counts when we begin to see the domes. It only counts when we begin to see that these are, might not be in human form or might be in human form, but present themselves as they truly are. Show yourself, people, show yourself. But they have no interest in showing themselves. I actually took a little bit of, after doing my, my podcast yesterday, I kind of, okay, let me try and link up. And I kind of got this, um, you are not allowed access. <laughs> <laughs> slamming of the door in my face. 
But uh, then I drummed up uh, the holographic advisory boards and said, kind of said, well, um, if they are part of some original civilization going back to Atlantis, because that's my best guess, because there were survivors of Atlantis. There are different debate whether or not they took off planet. I actually, I do have a memory of uh, groups that took off, but the question is if that was in Lemuria or if it was in Atlantis. I don't really know. I just see how they take off in crafts. And I know they will be coming back at some point uh, or should have come back. That was the plan because everything runs in spirals, everything runs in cycles. So at some point, if you leave a reality field before you're done with it, you kind of have to complete what you, what you began there, either to clean it up or to... Um, uh, fulfill that cycle of information and knowledge that you came into that reality field to develop. And that's why I'm here, uh, not going as I anticipated, because um, I was supposed to be in my operating vessel and not inside the enclosure in this physical form. That's a little bit of a mishap, <laughs> of a mishappening uh, of uh, my original plan, which uh, has been wiped from my brain. I only get glimpses of it because if I kind of could link up to my original what was I actually supposed to do here in completeness I would be able to link up to the different types of technologies I have got on this planet because I've been here many times during many types of civilizations and many different types of eras uh, many t different type of density unfoldings so being inside this uh, enclosure which is kind of the drop zone of the misfits is definitely a bomber. Uh, and that is the information that I haven't talked much about it, but it, you know, as I get, I've completed the progression work. I've done what I needed to do as in kind of, let me wind back many years ago when I began this work and I was kind of thinking, well, there's a lot of information out there. How can I contribute? What can I contribute with, uh, with my special features? What would I like to do? What would I find interesting to do? Because just being one of the many joining the choir or saying the same things are not really my forte. I like to do things my way always. That's me going as far back as possible. And it got me exiled from the councils for a period of time because I like to do things differently, but not in the manner as evil, devil, schemey kind of things, but as in, okay, how do we actually pro progress and how do we follow the rules of the ancient ones to the dot? I am uh, what we call in Danish a rule writer. I write the rules, the laws, the principles. I don't deviate. Whenever there's something, I'm just putting it up against the rules, putting it up against the principles and uh, seeing where that takes me in the terms of what we call prospected future timelines or coach dreams, depending on the information I'm working with. So I'm, I'm very rigid in that manner. I'm really into the order, harmony and balance kind of thing. Um, and that also means that when a system goes into a certain percentage of failure, then it must be segregated or shut down. And that's kind of where I deviated from the councils because I said they need to be shut down. That's the law. And they said, nah, we should give them a second chance. We should do this. We should do that. And then we had a big falling out. We had a big roar is that words were exchanged. Um, Try to have a what you call a fight in uh, telepathically <laughs> in a holographic council where everything is created holographically. We meet up holographically and you have a holographic discussion, which is actually not a discussion because you're not verbalizing it, uttering voices and having sound waves floating around. No, you do it uh, envisioning the results of it. So it's not really a raw, it's not a raw, what you call it, a row. Sorry about that. It's not really exchange of word or a fallout or anything it's just what we could say a discontinuity a discontinuity sorry about that of uh, agreed prospected code streams and uh, uh, prospected future outcomes of the decisions made but there were uh, definitely what we call a more uh, complicated matter involved as well. It's just the beginning. It is okay not to, to be in alignment with the councils. That is completely, perfectly okay. 
as long as it's within the rule set of the ancient ones, right? So we can disagree on the laws and how to to fulfill the laws uh, inside the developmental program. So that's kind of where the discussions come up. It's it's very interesting scientific discussions. But I would say the problem were probably with the reseeding of the fall cycle after the fall of Atlantis. That's probably where things began to, to be difficult. Um, with the Sirenes and the Pleiadians taking uh, the main control of su- kind of supervising uh, the reseeding in Egypt, again with some of the races from Atlantis that had uh, managed to escape the planet, got off planet, and then came back to continue the Atlantean civilization, but not uh, within the lineages that kind of went completely berserk in the last time of Atlantis and led to the destruction of the uh, more or less the entire planet. It tilted around and new land masses arose after that one and were engineered to arise like that one, as in its... Um, a lot can be done with uh, the alien or the inserted technology. Realities are um, constructions that can be assisted or uh, alleviated of their default uh, programs and systems. So, so anyways, when you understand everything runs on holographic code systems that can interact with consciousness, things change quite a lot in your perception. Okay, how, what's actually possible? And that's also why there is a great responsibility in... What do we do as a joint race with this reality field? That's where the councils come in so that we are agreeing that this is this is how we move this because we know it's all about the progression dynamics, all about the elevation cycles. So if we are all agreeing that we want to get to the highest purity rate of transformation of energy of the previous universal cycles, step one, the highest standards will be that we develop the highest life force within these what we call nurseries that are uh, reality fields, you can call them terrestrial or out of domain sectors, where the molecular state can be worked with so that it generates a specific type of fire that leads and and uh, evolves into what we call life force. It has nothing to do with sexual energy, and our physical form has a very weak version of life force, and that's why we're technically a fragile beings that easily fall into disease, combined with our distorted basic molecular foundation due to the prior, prior races that have misused their genetic compositions, because the joint fields and the, the the different types of code sequences that allows for life, uh, life uh, force and uh, life forms inside this reality goes with the root races. And if the root races contaminate their foundational blueprint, well, then it contaminates the, the, the lineages that follows after the sins of the father, as you know, it kind of runs in the DNA as long as that lineage continue until it burns out or the, the, the DNA or the genetics are so distorted that they begin to break apart and um, evaporate, literally cease to exist. So anyway, so the whole misfit came with some of the projects of Mesopotamia, the Anunnaki, and some of the things that they wanted to do. Anyways, we'll just leave it at that because that's a part of some of my personal history. And that, uh, let me just say that way that that in many, in the end, because I was against this, there was a faction that decided that I needed to get out of the way. So they framed it the way. So I was uh, treated in a specific way that led to to um, an exile into the Andromeda system, which were kind of okay. Uh, I went for a little detour in some other systems where I worked to fight the infection in the manner I thought it should be um, dealt with. As always, um, some of us have... Um, larger egos than others. And I have this foundational idea that if only (laughs) I might find the solution for whatever's going on here. But that's a good thing as a scientist, you have to believe in what you're doing, right? You have to believe in what you're doing is is right. But at the same time, you also have to be critical. You also have to look at what you're doing and why you're doing it. And what's the purpose of what you're doing? And does it lead to anything for the highest good of the many? And that's the perspective of all of this information that's coming out now. I'm just kind of, what's the purpose of it? Is it that they want to do what we actually say? Well, they will come out as instead of being the, the hidden people, as they are called, will come out 
present themselves and say, yeah, we have been here for a long time in their tallness of two meters tall and with their original features and everything that that were some of the civilization that reached that high level of advancement in, in the prior civilizations uh, that have done sit-overs, uh, have gone off planet, come back, uh, taken up the original networks they were part of, recreated their racial grids, undone the contamination level of their racial genetics. And that's one of the reasons why they don't want to mingle with us, because there is this affectability between different forms of uh, genetics and the original lineages that they sprung, sprung from. Sorry about that. So hence the closure. We are in here because they don't want to really get in contact with us. And they are having, we are having this pocket reality where everything around us is moving on and advanced civilization, ETs coming in and out and whatever. Nobody really cares about us. That's a sad song, right? Man, nobody cares about us. But <laughs> it's like, this is the pocket where things that they don't like get stumped here. And, and I wasn't supposed to be here. I was outside when I came in. So that's my kind of what the fuck? Um, dealing. So again, so for me, as of many of you, it's all about remembering who and what we are and then learn to do things the right way. And there are different, is it really a goal to try and get in contact with the hidden people as in kind of get into their realities? I've been there a couple of times in 2015, actually, before I went to Australia. And one of the reasons why I saw what I saw in Australia, because I have the genome composition to be able to uh, see things there and uh, create a holographic vessel and an orb, if you like, and interact with it because you don't have to have a full full pentagram figure to to interact with things as long as it's just a perception level where you go in and telepathically can communicate and not actively need to work with tools that an orb has issues dealing with tools right but if these tools are holo holographically uh, oriented and they run by consciousness, well, you can do a lot of stuff as an orb. You don't have to have a body. That's the out of domain feature that has kind of frozen into that configuration to be able to handle matter after the timeline event. Okay, so that's a little bit here and there, but it, it goes, it points out something. Because it points out the idea, okay, they are here and they're operating here. They've been here for a very long time. They have been part of the human evolution. And if we do the planetary hierarchy, as Bailey talks about it, uh, then there has been a plan for the development of humanity. And the whole Bailey material was this 100-year plan that was supposed to come to fruition here in 2025. And it has not, not as you read of it as it was put into the books. Um, the ideas, I've talked a little bit about that in, in some of my material as well as some of my free lectures. It's kind of, it's not really there. We are not having schools that are teaching children about their energy system. They are, of course, pointing out the chakra system, but it doesn't have to be that model. It could be something else. We're, that's not part of the um, curriculum of, of primary school, is it? Uh, on the contrary, we are having kids being afraid of going to school because of you know what I'm referring to, no need to say it out loud. Uh, of course, not in Denmark, but we are getting, we have had our mass shootings here in Denmark as well, and Sweden, it's definitely rippling into our uh, societies as we are getting more and more globally connected because of the internet, and there are always... Uh, these, as I said, we are in a pocket reality where the misfits have been put in. And I'm not here talking about the organic vessels. I'm talking soul potentials. I'm talking about specific types of DNA. And that's one of the reasons why some of the extraterrestrials in the Android version are interested in our pocket and have been allowed to get in and do whatever they want to do here because <laughs> nobody cares about us. That's up to us to get out of here. And secondly, it's a fucking big library of different types of genetic compositions, even though science tells us, oh, we only got ATCG DNA. But that's just the frequency version of it. If you go beyond that one and all the overlays and everything else that's part of our energy system and all the configurations we have had that connects to different code streams, that connects to different um, types of 
uh, genetics that can be manifested again if you connect to it consciously you can activate this hidden dna or genetics of the original or prior races of very advanced civilizations that used to be here that are hidden on the code stream it's part of human history it's like if all of you you know akashic records they're kind of the planetary records even though i would say most of what people have tapped into either they have not been brilliant enough to understand the sciences of it and just interpret it via their subconscious emotional interpretation systems uh, historically and culturally determine what they were able to perceive but if we really go into the planetary records and go in then it's not just a matter of going and say oh yeah that's history no history is connected to code stream it's connected to the reality field network it's connected to genetic potentials so information is not just information information is access point to reality code streams where you can tap into a specific genome or genetic structure that can recreate a prior life form we're talking jurassic park here so that means it's kind of very and it's done consciously it's done holographically if you can go into that pocket of information that code stream extract the right code you can take that code and then you can put it into a, a replicated holographic field and then you can activate it using cube technology and torus technology and then begin to put it to produce life force which can then be harvested and then the clone can be ditched or whatever. That's what the aliens are doing. I've been doing for quite some time and we don't know of it other than we are getting the side effects of it, that we are getting the distorted level because it has to go somewhere. So while they are purifying uh, their versions of uh, what they are harvesting, we are getting the residuals that ripples into our energy system and then we have to clear out the energetic parasites and whatever shit technology and programs they've been using and the crystal discs and whatever bullshit the storyboards and all of that stupidity that is an ongoing process for those of us who are um, in this ridiculous game of being a part of a mass production of uh, DNA code sequences for races that should not be here to begin with. So that's part of the, the what we talk about, the, which when I want to go I have two two ways here. Uh, one is one that kind of came in as a kind of intersecting was this whole new world order depopulation program. Not necessary because we are being ground harvested. <laughs> Give it 10 years time and <laughs> people will fall apart. There's no need for that depopulation. It's happening naturally over the course of time. And since all of these races are outside our pocket and time doesn't exist, it's part of the, the our emotional field construction, then they don't care. They don't give shit shit seriously they can they live for thousands of years so so they don't need to depopulate it's it's in our inside our pocket we are overpopulated in our pocket they are not op overpopulated around us so that's also some of the things that we kind of need to wrap our little heads around but as always as i always said with the the attempts of many of the things that have been put in there is kind of whenever they they're dripping the correct information and people that have the wits will pick up on it but they don't have the full pattern so they have to wait for years and years and years to get the full pattern it's like you get one little drip a month or a little one little drop a year all depending on what they want to do with you what program they want to pull you into because then you kind of latch on to that idea but it's not just an idea it's also a code stream it's also a code sequence that links to a code stream that has a symbol built into it uh, similarly if you take the human dna for instance it has four letters right that's how we interpret it but the grays have a different or orientation of it for instance the the y chromosome it's an, a reverse triangle right it's what it looks like and then you can put the y in the middle of the reverse triangle then you have the y chromosome the x chromosome is a square put it in the middle of that one then you have the two geometrical features that can then be put into a, a, a more complex code system typically a uh, spherical where these two can be put into the middle and then you can begin to put in a holographic network and then you can link it up to a program typically a cube and then it can begin to download different programs that will then make that dna or genome con uh, configuration unfold into different radiation emission um 
like radiating out from the core of it, which will then can link, link up to a lot of timelines. So that's very, very similar. You just need one sperm cell and then you can do a lot of very fun things in these storyboards that they have very advanced technology. So they don't need humans per se, but they definitely need to milk uh, <laughs> and have been milking uh, both males and females and, and trying to figure out what that was about. Very uh, uh, different approach to uh, reproduction, which is some of the codings and some of the things that have been put into the pocket reality we're part of, because it's kind of, yeah, we create this pocket reality. I explained a little bit about the, the origin of it as part of the registration program, but it's been hijacked and altered. And now it's become kind of like the TV show, The Island, right? It's a holographic, beautiful island, but we're here to, <laughs> it's a rehabilitation center, right? And at the same time, it's ex ex experiment experimental center there are these civilizations that are around some of them are humans like you and me but enormously advanced they are on a completely different wavelength than we are in terms of what they are doing these are some of the science labs uh, and and they are experimenting to try and find new ways to create different types of hybrids which they also did during the time of atlantis nothing new there history is repeating itself and that's kind of a little bit with some of the things I saw in Australia. And as always, did I go there physically as I kind of opened the door in reality and went out? No, I went there as an orb or I was in my clone or I was somewhere else, either part of these projects or recalibrated to be able to see this. And when I talk about being recalibrated, I'm not talking about a little bit of dizziness as in kind of, oh yeah, that's interesting. No, I'm talking about being couched or being thrown to the floor with a serious shit of dizziness and tingling and the whole body just being amped up to a high vibrational level as kind of like that one <laughs> and then being enormously uh, very very uh, uncomfortable for quite some time uh, really just lying there and just give you something to hold on to because everything is just very very unpleasant right now and then after a couple of hours of three I would get out of that state and then um, while I was in that not sleep paralysis at all because I could move around go to the toilet eat whatever but being so dizzy and so nausea and so headachy and so everything because I was being amped up to um, holographically, mentally, visually participate in what they wanted to show to me. But there were more also kind of what we call in action uh, bleed throughs that were interesting while I was in Australia. So there was this being amped up to be able to be uh, consciously participating while I, my body was here, but my consciousness was somewhere else, uh, participating on crafts or to p participating in, in what was going on in the labs. Um, often as a guinea pig, not really as someone kind of saying, oh yeah, I want to participate in this one. No, thank you. Not kicking, screaming, fighting, doing whatever I could until they decided, yeah, let's probably just uh, <laughs> put her under. And, and sometimes they don't want to bother with me consciously. And then it just put me out for 12 hours. It's still going on, but not to the same degree as it has been because... Over the course of time, I've learned different techniques to fight against this and clear out and just make a lot of holographic hassle, to put it that way. So either way, it is what it is. Things are as they are. But in Australia, when I was there, this is what I want to talk about. It was... It was if the first time I came in 2017, Christmas 2016, until New Year 2017, a lot of very unfortunate things happened, which I mostly refer to. But here I want to talk about what I actually saw when I was there the first time. <clears throat> and one of the things I saw was there was this uh, American... Um, I don't know if even if it was... Oh, I can't remember what... It, was it not not a warship? I don't think so. I think it's one of these ships that actually sailed to Antarctica or something, a science ship or something. Sorry, forgot what it was. 
But what I, the reason why I didn't notice that so much was I saw this huge American ship. I thought, that's interesting. What are the Americans doing here? And the girl I was with, she explained, oh, that's quite common. They come in here and uh, get oil and whatever before they move on to an Antarctica or something. Whether it was a uh, Coast Guard, I think it was Coast Guard, actually. So anyway, so some of these very large uh, American ships that are down there due to the alliances between uh, Australia and America. But what I saw on that ship, was there was a fourth dimension part of the ship in the where if, if you went down the ship as a normal um or the captain or whatever not knowing this you would you would go down into the ship and you would see the machine room and whatever but i was showing that there was a fourth dimension to it so there was also science life but in the fourth dimension as part of the ship so this was this enfolded reality as we have this physical reality but behind that as part of the same locality as part of the same ship there was a science lab as well which was very interesting to see so what how how does that work when they trail uh, sail to 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 antarctica how does that are they then experimenting beneath the ocean or are they connecting to some of the because we know under antarctica those of us who kind of uh, have the understanding that there have been prior civilizations. Of course, there's been some huge uh, civilization under the ice cap of Antarctica and is kept uh, dormant for reasons and purposes, probably purification or perhaps as a future continent where the next root race would be seeded. So it has been kept pure. So that's also a possibility. So so what are they what are they working with there? The pure network levels uh, on different dimensional settings that are accessible on under the continent or under the ice cap of uh, Antarctica. Because if it are is to, to rise up, melt up and rise up to be the the, the landmass of the six root race, for instance, then the network, the racial grid would already be there are they traveling there to try and harvest some of these uh, networks and some of these racial code streams to try and reproduce that type of dna already now in the human population as in if they want to create uh, america north america to be the new atlantis um, with an upgraded type of civilization in the chosen ones you know uh, into this type of features that they had back in Atlantis are they then using the code streams of these untainted areas of our planet just asking the questions and I think it's it perhaps a little bit of rhetorical because normally when I ask the questions I normally get yeah thumbs up that's it so so that's probably what they're doing there so when we talk about this whole, and I think what we need to do now, is we need to take a frog leap. When we talk about UFOs, alien races, we need to get going. We have been talking about fucking disclosure for 50 years now. And the people that have done that, they have done a brilliant piece of work. They really worked well. They have given us so much information, but they're coming new generations that are taking the same ideas up and talk about it again as if their generation needs to work with it and give their version it, rebrand it, and then work with it in their modalities and that fits their genetic composition and, and their minds. And they are welcome to do that, the different ways that goes into this, uh, this level of information. So the oldies, those of us who are not the first generation of which that took the forerunners of that one. Um, we know Richard Dolan, Linda, uh, um, what is it called? Uh, how forgot her name. Is it Howley, Mowley? I can't remember. I never really listened to her, but I know she's been doing a lot of work. That group that were part of the first, uh, Steve Bassett, all of these, Stephen Greer, all of these people that are part of the forerunners of that one. They have definitely paved the way f so that the rest of us can kind of say, well, the groundbreaking research has been done there. It has broken down what we call the rigidness of the political resistance, political and scientific resistance towards this. Now we are having scientists like Puthoff and others, PhDs, that are uh, of the a different generation or an older, I don't know, they are of, of that um, next wave that are going to say, okay, 
as I always talked about, and as the beta material actually talks about, that the intelligentsia will be the ones that will seed the next step of the human evolution in different ways and forms, because the fifth cycle and the fifth dimension is all about sciences. So of course it has to be then, whereas the spiritually imbued people were the fourth cycle, the tribal love and light communities and all of that, that's your fourth cycle, <laughs> the next bunch is coming in and trying to figure out, okay, what are we to do with this? What's the goal of this work that we are doing now? What, where, where are we taking this? So if we are going to have these very advanced sciences, for what? For what purpose? For what reason? And what future lurks out there that we are uh, being the seeding groups of to alter the collective human consciousness field? and become that new group of humans that are effectively working with the extraterrestrial sciences, working with the original understanding of holographic realities as they already did back in Atlantis. And they did it uh, at the peak of the Lemurian Epoch. Not so much Mu, but the continent of Mu, but they had other, uh, they laid the foundation of the fourth cycle technically. So it's been many different attempts and it has been, um, more or less sometimes just on planet, other times uh, um, X planet, so to speak. But that's, again, when we talk about the solidification of our reality field, turning into what we understand as a planet. So see how quickly my mind just jumps into that wording and these concepts that we live on a planet. So I want to pull it out of that one again and say, okay, pocket reality, pocket reality, Randy pocket reality, not planet. So if we are in a pocket reality, as in a cocoon, uh, in a, an orchestra Truman show, how, what do we need to do to get out of the cocoon? And that's part of the progression work and some of the things I've been working with, but there are different paths to get out. There is the progressive that goes with the original progressive uh, civilizations. And then there are what we call the hidden people of the different groups of races that have been part of our planet that are still here, but existing outside our pocket. So if will you see them if you go out into space? No, you won't, because this version of reality, as long as it's perceived within the frequency spectrum, as I talked about, you will see this universe as it has as it is unfolding on the frequency level. So you need to shift your mind uh, into density and holographic perspective. And then you will see, oh, that's interesting. Then your planet is no longer a planet. It will be a holographic, um, more like a kind of, uh, what do you call it? Spheres within spheres, uh, not the flower of life configuration, but more or less something like that, but expands out. It connects to the other realities through different types of networks with nodal points. And all depending on if you look at it from the outside or your inside of it, it depends where you are when you're looking at things. And if you're outside, then it will form into what is in alignment with your consciousness potentials. If you're inside of it, you will perceive it what is in alignment with your consciousness potentials. So we can't really say, oh, it looks like that. I can, we will draw the same thing, all of us, if we go out and, and look at it, because it's not, it's interactive. So reality will change according to what we believe and what we have of our ideas. Years. So the grand thing will be when when we begin to take this concept of okay, we are having quantum fields, we are having on the, the 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 mini scale or the micro level of reality, things are most more or less either dark energy or into space, you choose yourself. And then it can manifest into these solidified forms. But these solidified forms are only solidified because we determine they are, because we perceive them that way, because we are vibrating on the same frequency. So we have that configuration. But if we look at ourselves from a different perspective, then we might look quite different. We might look like some empty shadowy, not shadowy, but some empty, uh, like a mist kind of thing, where there's a little bit of light here and there with huge distance in between, because that's all we got left of viable genetics, right? That are connected actually to the proton and neutron in our cellular 
configuration uh, on the atomic level. The electrons are just the energies that keeps us going. That's the artificial life force, if you like. But the true life force and the true consciousness potential are linked to the proton and the neutron ties us to the, the quantum field of our reality. So that's how I perceive these kind of things. So if, if we kind of say, well, if you remove the electrons and, and we fall apart as an electric grid and go in and see ourselves as a consciousness field that are connected to our reality via the neutron in all of the atomic uh, molecules that we have and tie down and anchor us in there as part of the reality field network, which can then be altered into what we call a holographic net network. If we change the neutron properties and, and twist them a little bit around and go beyond the quantum field and see ourselves as that kind of being with this mystic kind of thing with a little consciousness potentials here and there, then we would look quite different. We would walk around in this reality seeing it as it's not the, the movie matrix moment here, but as in kind of a, a a holographic network where we of these ghosty kind of things are <laughs> walking around in these field lines um, and different code systems that can then configurate and, and get into our misty thingy blob or something and, and take form and then manifest itself into suddenly be there and then like virtual particles uh, can come in play and, and, and zone out of play again all depending on if they are be given, been giving enough energy from the reality field itself. I know how this sounds. So if we kind of could get to that point and we see the pocket as that one and stop as a collective seeing it as the real world it would become this misty thing that we could then disperse and then gather what's left of our little viable genetics in a little orb and then begin to build a true light structure that we actually were supposed to have. So just to, to play with some ideas here, because that's where I want to go with this, because that's the next step, people. The next step is not to put more information. The next step is to kind of get to where you, for at least for me, it's been like that. I've known a lot of stuff always. I've seen a lot of stuff always. I've seen all the stuff in Australia and I took it in. I remember it. Uh, I'll go back to some other information uh, when when it's suitable to do so. Um, here we're talking about reality and we're talking about the dimensions within the locality uh, of our reality. And, and, and here expanded that out to the understanding of us as not being real. We're not real. We think we are. The only thing that we, we're really real are because we still have viable genetics inside this misty, non- true energy system, organic vessel that if we put it into a different vibration, it will completely decompose and fall apart because it's so crystallized. It's built up with this crystalline network that is artificial in all of its um, levels and are part of a, a type of third cycle energy that doesn't belong here imbued with fifth cycle energy of the Syrian system that doesn't belong here either. So we have, it's, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. So what would happen if everybody began perceiving themselves as these mystic kind of things? Would we then turn into it? And would we then be able to, to gather our consciousness potentials and put it into an orb? And then we would just blast the program and, and get beyond and get beyond the perimeter of it, the quarantine zone, and get out there and, and knock the door to the other realities and go in there and say, hey, I demand code stream so I can recreate a vessel that is appropriate for this reality. I'm done being part of the pocket. Seriously, I've done my work. <laughs> Not as in I deserve, I demand, because it's all up to what they feel that if they want to let us in. So the, again, when we talk about this, yeah, I demand, but yeah, they have an interest in keeping us here, right? Because there's a whole industry going on keeping us here. Because as I said, it's a nursery. It's, it's a fucking library of all sorts of genetic compositions. And it has value. So we're up against some really... 
what should we say, less positive stakeholders that are having their own realities and they have us as their mining ground, not just the Anunnaki, but also the different groups of enhanced humans and advanced civilizations that have survived the different catastrophes, vibrated up, are now living in adjacent pockets of reality inside the field of reality that we are part of as well. So for me, the next step of this one would be trying to, uh, there's no negotiation because what, what leverage do we really have, right? So it, it, it all comes down to justice. It all comes down to seriously, do you think it's still appropriate to keep us stuck inside this pocket? I see some beings here that definitely should stay there. We could minimize the pocket. They, they could just be dark orbs. They don't actually have to have a physical human form. Could we just put them into a little enclosure and a very small one and, and keep them in a network where these dark orbs would just stay there? Because they, they are floating around. They, we might, or I sense them as actual beings, but uh, they are just orbs here as well, dark orbs, which can only be seen if you kind of have a night camera. Otherwise, you won't see it when you turn up the lights. You can't see the dark orbs, but you can feel their presence, which some interpret as ghosts, but they are they're quite more than that. But... That's one of it. And then we also have the ones that are embodied into human form. Could, could we just take all of that and push it into, that would be suitable for an enclosure, all of these malicious, nasty, perverted, predatorious shit souls. Let us put them into enclosure, but the rest of the human population that are stuck here of the original variety, we're stuck here because our molecular state is not good. And instead of really trying to solve that equation, there are being produced new types of genetic sequences from it and new races will be seeded instead of actually following what the council set out and why they kept giving us the second chances to fix it. Because it is fixable. It is fixable, but it demands following the laws of the ancient ones. You see, that's where the problem kicks in because they don't want to do that. They don't want to be this um, D14 collective allied. They want to do something differently. So that's, that's how they want to dodge this one. Rather, why about civilization after civilization? Because the body doesn't matter, right? and then try to recreate new genome sequences by getting access to the future networks that were planted into this reality field because there were being supposed to be different root races, right? So let us rather try to get access to something that is not ours to take so we can create new civilizations than trying to fix the problem of the past civilizations. Because history repeats itself. It repeats itself because it's coded into a DNA. All of the lineages in this sector ties back to the same collective history. And no matter how many new networks and new realities you seed them into, they will eventually have to face up with what they are. That's karma, people. They have to face up with what their configuration have been part of and what types of configurations they have had and how they have expressed their consciousness potentials in these different configurations. That's sciences of the progressive worlds. And that bullet cannot be dodged. You can shoot it <laughs> and try to dodge it when it comes your way. It's like a boomerang. It, then it just goes on forever. And eventually in some cycle, it will come back. And then it will have gathered so much momentum that instead of just being something you could have healed and dealt with while it was shut off, it becomes a fucking nuclear bomb when it hits in the previous cycles. Just saying. So I'm um, not giving any solutions because my goal with these podcasts are not to give solutions, but to raise critical questions because it's not about the nuts and bolts about how these crafts work because it's just fucking technology like our computers. Who cares? Technocrats. That's their thing. Third cycle, been there, done that. That's not the point of this universal cycle. This universal cycle, we develop a life force, not technology. 
the right type of life force that can connect to the highest order energy and the highest progression rate of all the consciousness potentials to develop civilizations that are so beautiful that we can merely dream about it. That can never be accomplished with technology because it goes with the heart, people. It goes with responsibility. It goes with the highest good of the many. It goes with the complete understanding of what light actually is and what the purpose of life forms actually are. Purposes, not one, not singular. So, which others call love, but I like not to use that word because humans have specific ideas of what love is and that's nothing to do with that type of love. But it is the all-inclusiveness of all civilizations that work together to get to the highest good of the many and assisting each other in manners that are um, for the highest good of all involved. Optimal outcome for all involved. That's the best way I can put it to avoid some of these little bit more romanticized ideas of what quote unquote spirituality is because that's it's nothing to do with spirits, so to speak, in the, the tribal old new agey understanding of it. We are moving beyond that now. We need to reconceptualize our understandings of what we're dealing here with here because if you really want to tap into the correct code streams that holds complex information system sequences that allows you to truly develop your energy system. You need to be very specific with the terminology and very specific of the goals of why you're doing what you're doing. Anyways, that's just what I wanted to share in this podcast. More ideas and discussions in podcast three. When that time is 